Welcome back, America. I know a lot of people today watching the John Durham investigation said, yeah, you know what? I know that happened now. It all makes sense. I can't believe what a dual system of justice the FBI showed and the biases it showed, the failures to file the law that it showed. But in, back in 2018, this moment was not a certainty. The only reason it happened was because a few brave people in Congress, uh, like Devin Nunes, former House Intelligence Committee chairman, and our next guest worked to overcome the Russia collusion narrative because they knew it was false. They weren't trying to protect President Trump or hurt Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden. They were just trying to get the, uh, America the truth. And our next guest, well, he prevailed. And I think today's testimony from uh, John Durham absolutely affirms that. Joining us right now, the former chief investigative counsel for House Intelligence Committee and my good friend, Cash Patel. Cash, welcome back. Hey, John, thanks so much and appreciate those kind words. I know you're flying solo tonight, but we'll land the plane. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, listen, you started this plane. You and a few show, a few people in the House Intelligence Committee behind Devin Nunes uh, really peeled back uh, a, a narrative that the intelligence community, the FBI, the Justice Department, the mainstream media, and big tech all tried to impose on the American people, and oh, Hillary Clinton's campaign too, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, misleading all of us. I mean, we were truly misled. And at the moment you guys issued your first report in 2018 and Adam Schiff said, it's all fake news, and it wasn't, um, you were against an incredible fury. But over time, the facts and evidence that you made available, I think it was in January of 18 and every day since, I think led to today's extraordinary moment. Today, everyday Americans got a, a healthy dose of, you know what? Russia collusion was bunk from start to finish, and we've got a broken justice system. Your reaction to watching John Durham, I know it's way too late, but it had to feel some satisfying to know someone affirmed everything you were telling us five years ago. Well, John, you know, you've, you've established a, an outstanding career in journalism based on the same theme, put out the truth. It's really simple. You don't have to go to Harvard um, to get that kind of education. You just want to be willing to serve the country. And that's what we did when he took on the Russiagate mantle. I made a deal with Devin. I said, look, you don't know me. I don't know you. Literally have no idea who Donald Trump is because um, I'd never met him. But whatever we find, we put the truth out. That's what we've been doing every day since. And I'm glad John Durham, as you highlighted, showed so much of America that doesn't watch the news or pay attention as closely as uh, you and I do that the Russiagate hoax was an entire uh, criminal crime syndicate perpetrated by James Comey and others at the FBI. There was no basis to launch the investigation, zero, that's John Durham's finding and ours, and there was zero basis to go to a FISA court. And of course, there was never any basis to lie to a FISA court to unlawfully surveil him. And critically, you know, the Steele dossier has become the most infamous piece of garbage in modern history. John Durham said not one single fact in that dossier was ever verified. Those are all things we said back in 2018 and you were brave enough to report it then. But the point is, John, we've gotten the message through the American people. I've got a lot of criticisms of John Durham, but for that, um, we're, we're, we're uh, advancing forward on fixing the justice system. Yeah, and I wanna ask about that because there are two tools that the House Republicans are, have at their disposal, uh, even in a divided government. The power of the purse, cut the budget of the FBI, <laughs> take away that mm -hmm. fancy new headquarters they want, but perhaps the more consequential one is reforming or ending the Section 702 FISA powers that allows Americans' phone and other data to be accessed without a warrant. Uh, you have a good sense of the temperature of your old colleagues on the Hill. Of course, you worked at the Pentagon. You worked at the National Security Council. You understand the whole field. Yeah. Um, your thoughts on what will happen to the FISA powers that the FBI has only for a few short months? Look, I'm in the minority on this one, I'm probably going to say, because America has been shown, as you just reported, how the FBI abused the FISA process, unlawfully uh, collected information on 250,000 people. That's just in the last year. Right. Um, Section 702, I'll tell you from a terrorism standpoint, counterterrorism standpoint, is an essential, valuable manhunting tool. We used it properly to track down high-value targets and run terrorism prosecutions and investigations. But it has been so massively abused, as you put it, and I've been working with the House Intel Committee on it. I don't think there is the will to reauthorize 702. They are not getting the concessions they need from DOJ and FBI to fix it. I don't think the Democrats are really helping. And I think the overcorrection, which is an unfortunate reality, when you expose such massive level of corruption, is what people are calling for. And that's why I think you're going to see its repeal rather than a giant re reform. Wow. That will be an extraordinary moment. 
I want to dig a little deeper into this because you uh, ran our counterterrorism operations for the National Security Council, who played a big role in getting rid of terrorists like uh, General Soleimani in Iran. Uh, you know when, what we need to do and the, the capabilities of the enemy if Republicans do that because the Democrats simply won't engage on the right type of reforms, will we be less safe when, when it does expire? Yeah, because like, you know, like Alan Dershowitz said, and like you've said, there's so many great Americans serving, be it at the FBI, DOD, CIA, IC, NSA, what have you. They use these tools for good. They use these tools to protect this country, safeguard our nation, and attack our adversaries when appropriate. Without those tools, it's not like there's something else we can just replace it with. But because of the years-long abuses, and these started with Comey, and even go all the way back to Bob Mueller himself, they have millions of inappropriate, probably unlawful searches from the 702 database and the query system. And so it's just gotten to a point where there where people in Congress are sick of it. And I understand that. And the knee-jerk reaction is, well, we're going to deprive you, the government gangsters, of this tool. But when in reality, what you're doing is you're punishing some of the people in government who abused it, but you're punishing America's safety because uh, so many used it properly because you want to get the few. And, and that's just not the right approach. There can be severe limitations on 702 and its query system, but um, I'm not sure. Congress has the will to entertain that. Those two gentlemen that showed up in my driveway in March of 2017 that, that tipped me off to the abuses of, of the Russia collusion told me that night the reason they came to me was they feared that if the abuses got worse, that they might one day lose these tools, tools that they said were going to be important to catch terrorists and, and spies. Uh, I think back now, they may have been right. Uh, we may be heading into that moment that they great, greatest feared when they approached me. Um, Cash, I want to turn to the other big story in Washington, Hunter Biden. I want to get your assessment of the deal and the extraordinary moment that's going to happen tomorrow. The House Ways and Means Committee is going to vote out uh, private tax information, the testimony of Gary Shapley, a decorated IRS agent who's now a whistleblower, who said Hunter Biden was being treated differently than any other tax defendant. Your thoughts on the deal and what we might learn tomorrow? Well, it's the two-tier system of justice on blast. Hunter Biden, I can tell you, as a former federal public defender myself, who has represented hundreds of individuals charged with this very same gun crime, just got the deal of a century, literally. These gun charges, when affiliated with narcotics issues in federal court, averaged on a prison sentence from three to five years, as they should, because Congress said guns and drugs should never be together. That is violent crime, and we need to punish these people. The U.S. DOJ's Department of Justice policy manual says... No pretrial diversion can ever be given for an individual who brandishes a firearm related to a narcotics issue. And that's what happened in this case. In every case I asked for pretrial diversion, I was rightly rejected. My clients were sentenced to prison. They were indigent. They were minorities. They were crushed to long prison sentences. I don't hear the left screaming about that or the ACLU now. But Hunter Biden gets a get out of jail free card from the deputy attorney general. That's the only person along with the AG who can waive the DOJ manual and guidelines on this. And they did just that. And that individual is Lisa Monaco, of course, one of the architects of Russiagate. And now she's the number two at DOJ, allowing the cover up with Chris Ray, the unlawful prosecution of Donald Trump, the corrupt prosecutors in the special counsel Jack Smith's case and Karen Gilbert. They're all in it together. They know they'll never get caught and they take favors for their friends to destroy our justice system. It's a real tragic day. And the tax issue, we haven't even gotten to that. Right. That's just another complete bastardization of due process in the judicial system when you give him misdemeanors instead of the felonious activities he committed. Yeah, such a great point. I'm going to give you an impossible mission. We only got 40 seconds left. Um, what is the most important fixes to this broken judicial system that could happen quickly? Wow. It, uh, removal of its entire leadership structure. The rules in place are pretty good overall. We might need to tweak one or two of them. It's the people who think they can abuse them, like Chris Ray, Rod Rosenstein, Merrick Garland, Lisa Monaco, John Carlin, all these people. And you see it, whether you look at Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, Trump's documents case, um, uh, and any other matter, Russiagate and John Durham's reporting. You, you're taking away tools from the many because the very few abuse them. And those people need to remove, stripped of their security clearances and denied government service forever. Tell us about your Government Gangsters book gonna be out in the fall, right? Coming out in the fall, but pre-order now, governmentgangsters.com. We've won, the book's going to print.
<laughs> Congratulations, my friend. I'll be one of the first to read it, I assure you. All right, folks, we're going to take another commercial break. When we come back, my former co-author on the book, Fallout, Seamus Bruner, one of the best investigative reporters I've ever worked with. He's going to join us next to talk about Hunter Biden. We'll be right back.